Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I know you all are gonna love this one because this one is going to be uh, kind of what I love to do with the home garden. As home gardeners, we do this all the time and we don't really realize what we're doing when it comes to pest management. With pest management, there is something called an integrated pest management. It is the use of uh, organic or inorganic, I choose organic, uh, pesticides, beneficial insects, and the use of basically uh, force to get rid of insects or nature to get rid of insects that uh, you can do in kind of an integrated way with your garden to minimize the effects of pests while not having to use harmful chemicals. And I think that's very great and it's an awesome way to go. And a lot of people are already doing it, but they don't even realize it. So I wanted to bring this video to you all to talk about it and kind of how we can apply an integrated pest management system to the home garden. And you may be doing a lot of these methods already. So awesome, thumbs up. That is so great if you're doing that. Uh, here in the MI Gardener channel, we are doing that all the time. And so uh, it is, one of the things that people think of integrated pest management is, well, it's called IPM and it's typically done in big agricultural farms. A lot of times people, they, uh, they, they think of IPM as being this thing that is done in hundreds and thousands of acre farms. And it is, it typically is done on, on that scale. But what I like to do is take those methods and bring them back into the home garden because they can be very effective in a home garden and they can even be multiplied. The effects can be multiplied and you can have even better results because you have better control over what's going on in your smaller space. So it can, uh, it can be even more effective is what I'm trying to say. So let's get into what an IPM kind of entails and how we apply it to the home garden here in the MI Gardener channel. So the first part to a very successful integrated pest management system is by planting what's called sacrifice plants. Sacrifice plants are plants that you plant to draw pests to them and not your other plants. So what we've done is we've planted broccoli here. Now broccoli is a plant that not many people would want to sacrifice, but the thing is, is we, we really can get broccoli just about anywhere and so we don't plant a lot of it usually because we don't have that much luck with it here. It's just, it's not the right uh, type of zone. I mean, we get broccoli, but just not the size of broccoli that you really would get growing in other conditions. It's just a little too cold here and then it heats up a little too fast. So here in the cottage garden, um, those extremes typically lead to bolting, which is what we're seeing here. So one of the things that we do is we plant the broccoli here not to get the broccoli if we do, great you know we're probably going to get some here but we actually plant it to attract pests because broccoli is one that is very prone to aphids and uh, white flies and cabbage loopers um, and and the cabbage moths so uh, those are ones and we don't have many pest problems here in the garden because as as we've talked about before and we'll talk about now with interplanting and stuff um, it really deters a lot of the pests, but we put these here solely for a, basically a sacrificial plant. Um, and that is what those are there. You can do this with potatoes. You can do this with anything that really gets a lot of um, pests. You can plant it and you can basically never, never take care of it as far as pests goes. So the pests go to it and not your other plants. It's very effective and it's just one of many things that we do in an integrated pest management system. So this alone is not considered an integrated pest management system. Um, I'm gonna start calling it IPM, hopefully you don't mind. Uh, I just don't wanna keep saying it. Um, so this alone is not part of an IP, this, this is part of an IPM, but this alone is not an IPM. So I'm gonna show you the other components now. So we're gonna talk about interplanting. So as you can see here, we have peppers and marigolds. This is a great interplanting where the two plants will kind of help each other. The peppers really don't get much of benefit from the marigolds, but the marigolds help the peppers not to get things like aphids and uh, uh, mostly aphids, but white flies and rabbits uh, won't come near the marigolds. So this again is a very good interplanting to help with an integrated pest management system. Um, and again, this alone would not be an IPM, but it's part of an IPM. 
The third most important component to an IPM is physical removal. And you can do this by one of two ways. In a smaller garden, you can come in here and you can make sure you check underneath all the plants. You can crush the leaves. And hey, Zoe, how's it going? We're talking about IPM, aren't you excited? <laughs> so, um, so basically you can come in here and you can crush the leaves uh, not crush the leaves, but you can crush the aphids on the leaves. And what's up? What's up? Yeah, you're as excited as I am about integrated pest management. Um, <laughs> so you can come in here and you can crush the aphids with your fingers if you want. Um, or the best method is by using biological control, which is by using things that are predatory insects. It's a great method and it's actually used on large scale farms where they will come in if you have aphids, they will come in with ladybugs. If you have thripes, they'll come in with, uh, I forgot what what uh, insect, what pest eats the insect uh, thripes, but um, if they have thripes, they'll get another insect. If they have white flies, they'll get another insect. If they have cabbage loopers, they'll get a product called BT, which is actually a, it's actually a bacteria that will, that will rot the, uh, the, the caterpillars from the inside out and, and consume them, uh, gory stuff. But again, it's physical removal. They're actually, they're not, they're not coming, they're coming into the garden and then they are leaving the garden because there are, there are actually predatory pests there. So that is a very crucial one to an IPM. And now we're going to talk about the final one that you can integrate into the garden. All right. And the final one is basically letting what we call letting nature run its course. Oftentimes, if you try to bring in certain pests and you um, and you try to alter the amount of pests that you have, whether they're predatory uh, pests or not, um, if you bring in more pests to try to combat the pests that are already there, sometimes it can it can mess up with the balance of life, and you can have other stuff come in. And sometimes that's a problem that people have with an with an IPM system. Um, and so what we typically find is that the alternative to that is by just kind of letting nature run its course. If you have plants that are being infected by aphids, you can use some of your other methods to get rid of them. You can use uh, like organic uh, pesticides like neem or uh, pyrethrin or uh, Bt. Um, well, Bt is more uh, the other one, but um, you can use stuff uh, like um, uh, organic-based soaps, uh, oils, there's so many different ones, diatomaceous earth, stuff like that, um, that you can you can get the pests under control, but don't necessarily remove them completely. And what that will do is it will actually call in lots of beneficial insects. So if you don't want to bring in pests to kind of mess up the balance, oftentimes just by letting nature run its course and making sure that it doesn't get too out of control, you're going to attract pests naturally. So if you have aphids, Keep them under check with some of your other methods, but as the season progresses, you're gonna you're gonna start to see ladybugs actually come in because they're gonna say, "Hey, there's food there, and I want to be where the food is," and that's gonna create a balance where you might not have perfect leaves. I never said you're gonna have perfect leaves, but they will not get out of control because nature will always find a balance. The only time that you don't have a balance is if you come in and really screw things up, or you have like a greenhouse where you put like an isolation barrier up where. Um, nature can't come in. And that's really the only time that you really would want to really mess with stuff. But an integrated pest management system is basically a combination of all of those or a combination of, of really any of them uh, put together. So you have four options and basically two or more of any of those options is an integrated pest management system. So hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you all learned something new. I highly recommend trying it. Um, it is a very effective way to keeping a pest-free garden. And it's something that I think uh, a lot of people, like I said, are doing, but just don't realize that there's actually a name for what they're doing. So uh, yeah, but that's it. I mean, again, look at these leaves. Like, God, I, they're amazing and they're pest-free. So uh, what we're doing is working and I know they'll work for you as well. So hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you all are learning something new from these episodes and hopefully you all are growing bigger going home. I'll talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.